up guys Al back again TKM Adventures we're out here on the trail we're in the beautiful Big Bear uh, I'd be lying if I told you I knew exactly where I was we just pinned some trails up I don't know exactly which they are but uh, today we're gonna have a different type of video we're gonna do a quick uh, not a quick rundown but we're gonna kind of go into detail about the trailer uh, ins and out front to back just basically kind of how we use it how we've been using it for almost three years now how we set it up why we like it and uh, why we think it's you know a trailer that really fit us very well so uh, we're gonna try to find camp here and set up and then do the, the walk around for you guys so stay tuned All right, guys, so we found camp with all these obnoxious people. Don't pay them any mind. We're gonna try to get through this video even though they're gonna be bugging the crap out of us the whole time. So let's start with the front of the trailer and then we'll work our way back and we'll go on the inside and we'll go into detail about everything that we like about the trailer. And probably some of the things we might not like too much about it. So let's get started. All right, guys, so let's start with the front here. Uh, the hitch, probably one of the most important parts of the trailer. This is what connects the trailer to your tow vehicle. So as you can see here, this is the DO35 from uh, Cruise Master. It's an Australian built hitch. It's fully articulating. A couple of things that I love about this hitch. One, it's super easy to, to hitch onto the truck. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a pin right underneath. This hole here drops right over the pin. Press one button and you're done. The other thing I really love about this hitch, it is super quiet. I mean, I don't hear a thing from this hitch. We pulled plenty of trailers in our days, uh, the ball hitch trailers, and they just squeak and make all kinds of noise. This one is as quiet as can be. It's built like a tank. I truly think that these are the type of hitches that even the regular type of trailers, box trailers should have because this thing is very sturdy and strong, very well built. We have our trailer plugs. This is the seven pin, basically just for your lights. And this guy here is an Anderson plug, something that we weren't used to having on our other trailers. This is, excuse the mess, because we just went through some water crossing, but this is straight power from your battery into the trailer to charge the batteries. As you can see how thick the cables are on this thing here. This charges the battery so much faster than the seven pin does. And uh, I'm not sure 100% if that's the reason why they do this in Australia, but this makes a world of a difference, having just a straight power from the vehicle to the batteries in the trailer. All right, so working our way back, as you can see, there's a trailer brake here, which is on a cable over to the brakes on the trailer. So when we get to camp, first thing I do before I unhook the trailer, is I make sure I have the emergency brake up. So as soon as I crank up the jockey wheel here, the trailer's not rolling on me. I do also block the wheels, but I always make sure that this one goes up first in case for whatever reason I forget to block the wheels. The jockey wheel here, for any of you new owners, if you're gonna, or if you're thinking about buying a trailer, or if you just bought a trailer, piece of advice, make sure that when you move this trailer around by hand say in your garage or whatever make sure this jockey wheel is all the way down these things have a little bit of a weak point here so if it's cranked all the way up and you try to push this around these things are known to snap here so some of the other owners have actually changed out their jockey wheel i haven't i really haven't had any issues yet but make sure that you crank it all the way down when you start pushing this trailer around Enough with the, uh, the boring part of the trailer. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of it here. This is probably, probably most of the owners or the, I guess the dads uh, of the family's favorite part of the trailer. I think Greg, you'll agree that this is uh, probably one of our favorite parts here. It's my spot. Yeah. It's your spot. 
These latches here, before we do that, these latches, they're called uh, anti-vibration latches, right? Is that mm -hmm. what they call them? These latches here, you know, when I first when we first bought the trailer, I thought to myself, well, these, these latches don't look very technical for such a fancy trailer, but, you know, these things work really, really well. They never come loose. I've never had an issue with one of them. And it, I mean, it does the job the way it's supposed to do it. So they, they, there's a little uh, tab here that you push on the side. You basically just push that little tab, pull this down, and it releases the latch there. So here we go. This is what they call the man cave. And you're probably noticing why. I mean, you got a swing away barbecue here. Swing away barbecue, uh, Webasto diesel heating system for the, the water. This right here was essential for my wife. Uh, had to have it. It's a little bit of a pricey add on to the trailer, but it's diesel powered. So it's super fuel efficient and it's super easy to use. There's a couple of valves here if you notice. Um, you probably can't see it. Let me open this guy up so you can take a look. If you come in and take a look, there's two valves here. One is for the shower and one is for the sink. So once you set your temperature for the shower and sink, you no longer have to touch these anymore. As soon as you set your temperature for the shower or whatever temperature you like, you don't have to fumble with trying to get the temperature right when you're trying to take a shower. You set it one time and you forget it. So when you go and take a shower, you hit this switch and you're good to go. You're not sitting there wasting water trying to regulate the water. We've had the gas powered uh, water heaters before in the past. And every time we went to go take a shower, we were constantly trying to adjust the water to get it to the right temperature. Don't have to do that with this. You set it one time and you're good to go. And the other valve does the exact same thing for the sink. This right here is your shower. As you can see, you got a really long hose here. All you need to do, set up a shower tent here. And you got hot water. Now they made this hose long enough here for a reason, because the last thing you really want is to have water pooling close to your, uh, your, your tent. So now with this long hose here, you can set up your shower way over there and you get no water by your tent. All right, so above the barbecue and the Webasto diesel heating system, there's this shelf up here. Now up here, what I normally keep, I'll keep some steaks for the tent mallet for the steaks i usually have some gloves some wipes things of that nature i don't necessarily keep tools up here um, because i usually like to keep the tools in the tow vehicle because there's a lot of times where we'll set up base camp i don't want to be gone or having to worry about forgetting to grab a tool and putting it in the tow vehicle all the tools stay in the tow vehicle so i know that anytime i'm out on the trails i always got my tools with me all right, guys, and if you notice, on each side of the man cave, you have propane tank holders. Uh, one is for the barbecue, one is for the stove, which I'll show you guys later. Uh, super, super handy to have. I'll show you guys later how I hook this up to the propane tank. I don't, I don't know if you have to, but I don't necessarily take the propane tank down when I'm hooking up the barbecue. It just stays there. I just hook it up, and we're good to go. I do need to take the propane tank off for the stove and move it over, but it's super easy to do. One of the things I wanted to show you guys, I had a, a viewer on our Instagram uh, ask us about that they wanted to see if these latches here were lockable, and they are. Let me show you real quick. If you close this here, you'll notice there's a little uh, pinhole here on each side. What you do is you buy these little master locks. They're luggage locks. They fit perfect right in here. Now they're not gonna keep a serious thief out, but the honest thief will probably get deterred from seeing the lock on there. Um, I don't use them a whole lot, but whenever we do set up base camp, I will lock them up and, and just feel more secure about it. So now let's really get into probably I would say probably as a family, the most important part of the trailer, aside from maybe the sleeping quarters. 
one of the toughest things when you go camping, as anyone who's gone camping knows, especially with the family, is how are we going to feed the family? Um, one of the things that probably deterred us from doing more camping trips than we probably would have wanted to was how much stuff we're bringing for the kids, how we're going to feed the kids, packing the stove, uh, packing a cooler, things of that nature, back before there was actual uh, uh, refrigerators like this one here. Um, so the kitchen had a huge, huge impact on our decision as far as why we chose this trailer. A lot of trailers out there that we went and visited and we did our research on just didn't have the same layout and the same quality of the fit and finish of this camper trailer. So I'm gonna go into detail with you of why this layout worked best for us and how all of the little cubbies and drawers work as far as uh, storage and, and, and being able to go quickly to camp. All right. All right, so let's start with the barbecue here. We have this really awesome swing away and as you can see, packing and setting up the barbecue. I, I mean, I've never seen it easier than this uh, for camping. The barbecue stays there, it's locked away, it's ready to go. All I do is take my line, hook it up to the propane tank and I'm good to go. Now the layout of this kitchen here, when I am cooking on the barbecue, my wife can be at the stove, cooking things on the stove, vegetables, whatever the case may be, and we both have access to this refrigerator. One of the reasons why I love the ARV refrigerator and its position in this trailer is that my wife and I can both have access on each side of the trailer and not be in each other's way. Uh, some of the other refrigerators that open this way, I'd have to go around to get what I need, but not this one. We both have access on both sides. And as if you can see, we are never in each other's way. The sink is here. So if my daughter is washing the dishes while we're both cooking, she is not in our way. There are three positions, and I speak. About, I, I tell this to everyone who's looking to buy this trailer, and I think it doesn't go uh, uh, noticed as much as it should. This sink here, if you notice, I can wash on this sink from three sides. I can wash from this side, this side, and this side. There aren't a whole lot of trailers out there where you can wash from three sides and not be in each other. All right guys, so uh, as you can see, my daughter's washing the dishes. There's a catch here that we put. We put a bucket down there, just to show you how we set our, our, our uh, kitchen up. We have that for a reason. I know they make a hose long enough for the water to just kind of drain away from the trailer, but we have that because we want to catch the water that's coming out of the sink. We use that water to put our fires out. So when we're having a campfire, we want to make sure we have enough water to, to, to put it out and make sure it's out. Uh, if you kind of get closer over here, you can see there is a section for your dishes here. Also our drawer. Excuse the mess, but there's a drawer for your knives, your cutlery, things of that nature. Um, and one of the other things I failed to mention uh, when it came to the refrigerator. To this day, I'm still amazed that they're able to add a refrigerator into the trailer and still keep as much storage space as they have. A lot of trailers, it takes up a lot of their storage spaces, but this one here, I can take this refrigerator out there's a plug back here. I unplug it, as you can see. I unstrap these, lift this out, throw this in the back of my truck, and I can go hit the trail with my refrigerator. So the refrigerator does not have to stay in the trailer. So uh, rest of the kitchen here, we have drawers here. They all have latches on them so that when you're driving around, they're not banging around or anything like that. Uh, another drawer up here. We have our power system here. We'll get into that in a little bit. And it's kind of a little bit involved. One of the things that we really, really, really love in this area of the kitchen is this bar top right here. As you can see, it's already getting full with stuff. This section here is rarely full. Um, we're never worried about uh, do we have enough space or anything like that. Everything is moved up here and we have all this space to do our cooking. Another drawer here. If you're lucky enough, you'll get some of these koozies. This one's empty, but uh, 
Luckily, I have a beer assistant, so. Beer assistant. There we go. See how easy that was? The stove. This stove here is from the 2017 model. Um, and the rest of the owners, the newer owners, forgive me when you see this. This isn't available anymore. Uh, the new one now has a removable stove. This one here, uh, back when they first came out with it, actually came with the windbreak. As you can see here, which they don't come with anymore. I'm pretty sure Patriot campers like they do, they'll come out with a, a different fix for that. But as of now, the trailers don't come with these wind brakes anymore. Um, if you look underneath here, there is a stereo. It's a marine grade stereo. I believe the newer stereos now are detachable and you can move them around to, to a table or whatever. Um, if you look over here to the side, again, another thing that is no longer available in the newer trailers is this quick connect here. Now you have to connect them in the back here but before when they were selling them in 2017 you could actually get them with a quick connect and you just hook up your propane bottle and you have this quick connect i guess for some reason it was outlawed in australia so they don't uh, they don't allow this anymore so it's quite a handy part uh, handy feature to have right, on this so let's talk uh the control center here this is the hub of uh, everything that operates the whole trailer uh, you have your Red Art battery management system. Now this one here, uh, it's still available in these trailers, but they've uh, come out with a new version. It's called the TVMS. Uh, Greg has that on his trailer over there. Maybe we'll go take a look at that afterwards. But basically you have all your switches here for all your lights. You have your water level gauge. You have your uh, airbags to level the trailer. So when you wanna level your trailer, when you get to camp, it's super easy. Uh, if, if you've ever seen any of Patriot Camper videos, they'll, they'll show you how to do that. But it's super, super convenient. Uh, no longer needing to use leveling blocks or anything like that. The Webasto diesel heating system here, you have your control for that. One of the great things about the Webasto is, is push button start. So anyone in your family can use it. If your wife needs hot water, you don't have to go set anything up. She can come in here, tap one little button here, and she's got hot water. It also has... A timer on it so you could set different timers uh, let's say you want the water to be warm by the time you get up in the morning at 6 a.m. to brush your teeth set it for 6 a.m. you'll hear it kick on come out and brush your teeth wash your face and you have hot water pretty pretty great system awning you got the wraparound awning here this awning they've made a new awning for it but the great thing about this one here two reasons why I like it one is it's really lightweight and two these poles here are adjustable so there's a lot of times where we might be at the beach or something like that and the sun drops. We can drop these poles to kind of give you more shade. It's one of the things I don't like about the, the stiff awnings that I can't adjust uh, the shade that I'm getting. With these you can and like I said they're super lightweight so uh, it, it drops a lot of weight on the trailer with having this awning on. It's a super peg on and they're made in Australia. <laughs> we just finished breakfast uh, we're probably gonna be packing up here in a little bit but uh, thought I'd finish giving you guys the full tour I didn't talk about the storage here as you can see and I think Greg will agree um, pretty amazed how much storage they were able to get out of this trailer considering all the things it has a refrigerator stove water tanks we still have this much storage if you look in here Storage goes all the way to the back. We have this drawer here for extra storage. We usually keep food and stuff. Well, extra food that we bring along depending on the size of our trip. We have a, a table back here. Now when we go camping, we really try to use the trailer exactly the way it was intended to be used. We don't bring extra tables and things of that nature. If we need a table, the kids can eat back here. This way we're not uh, taking too much time to pack up with too much extra gear. Um, another thing I forgot to talk about, LED lighting. Pretty much lights up the whole area here. You probably can't see right now because it's daytime, but... 
gives quite a bit of light. You can also do amber. It's supposed to help with the bugs. Um, it does help a little bit, but uh, you still get some bugs there, but not too many. The white one definitely brings more bugs than the amber. Power, uh, power supplies back here. Anything you want to plug in. Uh, storage in the corners here. We used to carry shoes in there, but we noticed, as you can see, it gets full of dust and dirt. So now the only thing I keep in here is, is uh, usually the blocks for the wheels and these weights here that I use for the awning, the feet of the awning. So in case they're somewhere we can't stake them down, I can put the weights down so that the, the, the wind doesn't blow the awning up. You got another another corner box over there. Same type of latches, the uh, anti-vibration latches. So it's pretty neat. You got your tire swing away. Here, your spare tire it's a full-size spare uh, the all the tires are, are all the same size as the ones on the uh, on the tow vehicle so you got an extra pair for uh, an extra spare for the tow vehicle um, if you lift this up here you see a, a tow hitch for a bike rack I've never used it for a bike rack because I have a truck and the truck pretty much stays empty so we throw our toys back there but if you needed to hook up a bike rack, you could. Uh, trash your room on the swing away. Let's get into the tent. Now, the tent is probably the biggest tent I've ever seen. I don't know if it's the biggest one on the market for a trailer this size. But, I mean, it's, it's a pretty awesome tent. Um, it's a lot faster to set up than it looks. Um, it really all packs up into one, one bag and it sets up all in one shot as well. So uh, if you need to see footage of that, you can check out Patriot Campers. They got a really good, uh, actually as a matter of fact, I could probably link it down below. They have a really cool setup video, probably a better video than I could do for you. But it literally is, it, it is as fast as they show it on that video. So, but as you can see, if you pan on the, on the tent, you have the main section of the tent, which is this area here back. And then you have the kids' room, which is from here that zips on, or you can leave it on like we do. There. And then uh, I'll show you guys inside what it looks like. But you can also see on the top, there's a rain fly, a tropical rain fly that, uh, you know, helps keep all the condensation or the weather off your tent. These tents are, are pretty durable. It's a hard fabric that they use. So we've never really had any issues uh, with leaks or anything like that. Um, it, it's, a, it's a pretty tough fabric that they use for these tents. I mean, we've, we've used other tents before and the, the fabric isn't as strong as these that I've noticed. So, but let's, let's give you guys a tour on the inside. Two doors, one on each side. Uh, as soon as you walk in here, as you can see, there's quite a bit of space even just to stand in here. Um, let me open this up a little bit more for you. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of space in here. Um, when we're not using the bed, we'll flip it over and then you got even more space. So we've actually, we're stuck in a sandstorm uh, one year in Anza and we we're with some friends and we actually, all the kids were hanging out on the, on the cots and we brought our chairs in here. We had our drinks and I mean, it was plenty of space just to kind of wait out the sandstorm. But um, so this section here from here on back is the kids room, which zips on, right? Like I said, or it just stays on and we fold it all together. We put two cots for the kids. The kids come and they, they set up their own cots. They have their sleeping bags, the pillow, and they're, I mean, they're good to go. It's literally that quick. Setting up these cots is probably uh, the most difficult thing out of this setup. Uh, we're probably gonna rethink it just because we wanna get even faster. Maybe put a couple air mattresses down or something, uh, some of the self-inflatable ones. But even these cots here, they fold up pretty fast, so it's not that big of a deal, and the kids do it themselves, so it gives them something to do. Um, porta potty here. We have underneath here, before we get into the bed, you can get into your storage underneath here. With a couple of latches. We usually have this open when we set up our tent. So this is where we usually keep our bags with our clothes and our toiletries and stuff like that. So we have access to it on the inside. Um, over here, 
there's a door that's usually open. We didn't open it this time, but that's where the porta potty goes. I'll, I'll do a, a probably a B-roll for you guys later on and show you guys that. Got to talk about the uh, staircase. This staircase here is, uh, I, I got to give them credit on this design. One of the things that my wife would always worry about when we talked about getting rooftop tents and things of that nature was dealing with the ladder. Um, this really solved that issue. As soon as my wife saw this, she knew that this was a trailer that she really wanted because this is so much easier to go up and down aside from a ladder where you gotta kind of back down it or, or even kind of scooch down it. We just walk right up, no issues at all. And if you look up here, quite a bit of space. This is supposed to be uh, a king size bed. I don't know if it's necessarily a king size. I would say it's more like a queen size, maybe for the US standards. Maybe in Australia it's a king size, but we've tried to fit the king size uh, uh, fitting fitted sheets on it and it's just too big. So I would probably guess it's more of a queen size bed than... Uh, as you can see, there's LED lighting here. There's LED lighting underneath as well a um, couple of uh, pouches in the corners there to you know put your cell phone in and stuff like that keys or whatnot um, if I can maybe borrow the camera there let me show you guys there's a vent down here so this uh, switch here that you can see right there that turns on the uh, the vented heat that comes into the the tent area so um there's a fan in here where as soon as you hit the switch there's a couple of modes there's a, a slow mode and a fast mode when you have the diesel heater running the webasto it'll pump warm air into your tent now it's not strong enough necessarily to heat up the the kids room as well as the main tent um if you just had the main tent alone open then it'll probably do the job we've been camp we've camped in the 20s before and you still need to bring a buddy heater it's not strong enough to to heat up a tent in that type of temperature but if um, you're in the maybe 30s 40s it'll it'll make the room comfortable for sure but with the windows down being up high we get a really good breeze coming through ours to to cool this area down and even the kids room yeah. which you can see at the end there that's got a vent and then underneath there there's also more windows it's kind of hard to see but that also helps to bring circulation in and cool this down so even in the summer it's not terrible to be inside makes it somewhat nice so that's that's it i mean it's a pretty comfortable space we love it i mean to be honest with you, I, I, I sleep like a baby when i'm in here and the kids have their space and so that's i mean it, it the layout that they've done is pretty phenomenal if you ask me to be honest with you uh the fact that we can have the kids in the same space which is something that my wife wanted they're older now so uh we might eventually give them their own space outside of the trailer but for now i mean this works out perfect all right guys so that's it that's the 2017 x1 gt uh we've had it for two and a half years now i mean we're just completely in love with it um you guys have any questions at all please feel free to comment down below um, i'm sure i probably missed some things so feel free to ask any questions you have hope to see you guys out in the trail